Today's Old Testament lesson is from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Gather together, gather together, O shameful nation, before the appointed time arrives and that day sweeps on like chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's wrath comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the Lord land, that you do, you who do what he commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. This is the word of the Lord. And today's epistle is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed by, at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. And we welcome the Holy Gospel with the... Uh, Alleluia in verse, the bottom of page 156. Alleluia, Lord, Lord, shall we know? You have the words of me. then Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel. Verse 43. And the next day, Jesus decided to leave Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Nathaniel asked Come and see said Philip 
when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join in prayer with the psalmist, Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Come and see. Jesus calls his first disciples. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Andrew tells Peter, we have found the Messiah. And the next day, according to verse 41, Jesus decided to leave Galilee and find Philip. The founder of our Lutheran church, Dr. Martin Luther, has this to say. Christ chooses as his apostles the poorest and lowliest he can find. He also adds, that follows this theme of come and see, invitation invites us to disregard preconceived notions and to believe in the fulfillment of the Old Testament. End quote. So our message today focuses on Nathaniel. What do we learn from Nathaniel? His reactions. John records that Nathaniel was an honest Israelite. Nathaniel hoped God would send the Messiah who was promised for so many centuries. But Nathaniel almost let a bit of cynicism come between him and the promised Messiah. A cynicism that can affect us also. Nathaniel was from Cana in Galilee, as we read in John 21. And Philip was from Bethsaida, also in Galilee. Evidently, Nathaniel assumed that everybody thought that Nazareth was the most unpromising village. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked in verse 46. His cynicism was almost enough to keep him sitting under that big tree. But Philip insisted and continued the invitation. Come and see. Jesus welcomes Nathaniel with here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. And other translations say it, no guile or no deceit. Nathaniel then asks, how do you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathaniel responds, Rabbi, you are the son of God. 
You are the king of Israel. And so Nathanael came to faith in the Son of God and lived to witness his resurrection Lord, as we read in the rest of the book of John. Yes, today though we focus on come and see. God's word today invites us, you and me, to examine the cynicism so that it doesn't keep us and others sitting under the fig tree and not getting up and sitting at the feet of our Lord and Savior. So can cynicism also stop us from following Jesus? Philip persisted in inviting others. Come and see. Cynicism. Where are the earliest reports of that? The word comes from the ancient world of Greek philosophy. In the time of Plato and Aristotle, the cynic followed unconventional behavior. They were considered rude, shameless, abrasive, like a barking dog. The cynic was the doubter. Today, we use the word cynic to refer to a variety of different persons. The dictionaries say that we usually mean someone who questions the sincerity and the goodness of people's motives and actions or who pessimistically question the value of living. Have you ever heard these expressions? Idealism is what precedes experience and then cynicism is what follows. Or the cynics are right nine-tenths of the time. Or no matter how cynical you get, is it, it is impossible to keep up. In every case, the cynic is one who, like Nathaniel, is unconvinced that a promised good will be coming. There are people of general but unfocused hope whose cynicism keeps them from going to the man of Nazareth. Some like Nathaniel, have not given up in the general, but only in the particular. Like Nathaniel, they are decent people, carrying on with a vague hope that God might yet work things together for good. Maybe we could think for a moment and remember someone who is on the fence whose intellectual pessimism and misgivings give him reluctance to put his trust in Christ alone. One might be reluctant to accept the invitation of come and see. You know those that, like how cold it is today, I'll just sleep in instead of hearing God come in our divine service. Philip's strategy to come and see is the only one that works with many cynics. As I relate to the book of Revelation, where John writes those seven sermons to the churches, particularly to the one to Laodicea, chapter 3, verse 15, he says, the Lord says, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were neither one or the other. Because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spew you out of my mouth. Yes, God has hidden himself deeply in our Nazareth and Galilees, our Bethlehems and Judeas. We are to challenge each other to look for Christ, where he has hidden himself and promised to be found. We are to encourage each other with our devotions, our Bible studies, our worship. We are to be strengthened in God's word, in his gifts of confession and forgiveness. In 
baptism, holy communion. As Hebrews 4 verse 12 reminds us, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. In God's precious gospel, God reveals himself as the Savior who died for the sins, our sins, yours and mine, and the sins of the whole world. And through the sacraments, he creates faith that receives forgiveness and new life. And through them, he is present in the lives of his believers, in their ministries, in our congregations, in their families, and in the societies. Yes, definitely come and see. There are people who proudly offer programs of self-realization, self-reliance, and self-mastery. Some cynics go well beyond Nathaniel's temptation to reject even hearing about Jesus, confident in their own programs for saving themselves. If the world, they refuse to come and see. I have my own plan, they say. I will stay under that big tree and refuse to come and see. In fact, the writer of the book of Acts records St. Paul in his cynicism, his opposing ways before his conversion in Acts 26. As we read Paul's quote, I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He would not come and see Jesus until, that is, until his pride was broken. Remember? On the road to Damascus? Remember that confrontation? Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Said Jesus. And Saul asks, Who are you, Lord? Jesus said, Jesus of Nazareth. Acts chapter 9. Now God does not break everyone's pride in the way that he broke Saul's. But we may be sure that God is at work undermining every human program that puts human strength in the way of coming to Jesus. Yes. How do we share that come and see so that Jesus himself overcomes their pride and brings them to faith? We must never urge them to accept Jesus with their own strength. We need to repeat and cling to Martin Luther's explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightens me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise up me and all the dead and give unto me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. And lastly, we live among many who are not Christians. Those people who despair over a corrupt world, they are led to all kinds of shameless, displeasing behavior. Their response, like that of the ancient cynics, are to flaunt outrageous and shameless behavior in the face of society. And yes, don't we see that on our news today? 
People young and old exhibit odd styles of dress, antisocial behavior. How do we invite them? How do we Christians develop a sympathy for persons whose despair may have led them to desperately disgusting behavior? Again, Philip teaches patience. Have a patient response. Invite them once more to hope. Keep telling them, come and see. What will they see? We, like Philip, need to keep coming and seeing Jesus ourselves, faithfully trusting his promise to be present with his people in their worship prayer, and service. Regardless of the cynic reactions that we face today, we also strengthen our own congregation to be a place where the people who came and who are not kept from seeing, but see clearly our Lord Jesus in his saving work the work that he did on that cross, or like my little crucifix to help me remember it. And to go on as the disciples saw in John chapter 6, Jesus feeding the 5,000, and Jesus walking on water, and then telling them to believe in him, the bread of life. And in John 14, where he comforts the disciples, telling them that he is the way to the Father. And he promises to send them a, the Holy Spirit. And then he prays for them. The salvation of the world is found in Jesus of Nazareth. The single most important thing we can do for cynicism in ourselves and others is to repeat. Philip's invitation. Come and see. And may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Jesus. Amen.